The last couple of roles that we opened up at Automation Helpers, we had over 80 applicants in just a couple of days. We realized we need to invest more in an applicant tracking system, but we didn't want to add yet another piecemeal software like Greenhouse to the mix. So one of the great things is that Softer allows you to build unlimited applications on any of its plans, including its free plan. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we help companies get automated by building portals, apps, and integrations. If you haven't gotten started yet with Softer, you can do so using the affiliate link in the description below. In this video, we're going to talk about a specific ATS template, but they also have an AI app generator. So you can just put in a prompt and that will generate your app in a single click. Inside of software, we're going to click on the button for new application. Then we can start searching for applicant. You'll see this applicant tracking option and there's two icons, one for Airtable and the other for Google Sheets. So this is which backend data source that we're going to use to actually store our data. In this video, we're going to use Airtable, but you can easily use Google Sheets as well. Let's click to preview. Here we can check out the different screens that it's going to create on our behalf. Let's use this template. You'll need to connect to your data source. And here we can see that software has automatically generated the tables that we need for this application. So we have three different tables, one for applicants, the actual people who are applying to the jobs that we have. We have positions. These are the open roles that we have in our organization. And we have interviewers. These are going to be the actual people who log into our applicant tracking system. They're the hiring managers of the team. Back inside of software, let's click to go to our application. And then here we are inside of software studio. This is the area where we get to configure how the application looks and behaves. Right away, you'll notice that we have these different icons displaying. And this allows us to configure what is visible by different people, whether they're logged into the system or they're logged out of the system, and depending on the user groups that they're a part of. So right here, if I'm logged out of the system, we don't want anybody to use our ATS. This is just for our internal company. So they're just going to see a login page if they're currently logged out. And then everybody else who's logged into the system is going to see this nice little grid here of our different resources of jobs, applicants, hiring managers, and my account. Account. So let's go ahead and preview what this is going to look like to our hiring managers. Up here, we've got a button to preview this. We can click on it. This will open up a new tab and we can see what this looks like based on being a logged out user or a logged in user. And we can actually impersonate the different users in the system because you might have different user groups. And so people have different permissions of what they're able to see and do. Right up at the top, we can see we are currently a non-logged in user. That's why we see this screen here. But this is where we could say, oh, let's log in as a different user, let's see what this looks like as Ari. So Ari, who is a hiring manager, sees that front page that we were talking about. And from here, we could take a look at existing open roles. You'll see there's a button here to add a job, which triggers this modal to add a new position. We've got add a new role, which is going to open up the broader form itself to add a new job opportunity. We've got applicants, so we can see all of the different people in the system who have applied to these jobs. Right now, this is set up so we can view all of the applicants, even if they're not for our particular role, but we could change that if we wanted to. And then finally, we can see my actions. And this is where we can see the different applicants that are part of our team or applying for roles that we have as hiring manager. Now let's check out our users. I'm going to click on our users section here and we can see that we have these three different users. These are synced from Airtable. And if we go back into Airtable, we can see that these are the same interviewers that we have. These are the different hiring managers who automatically bi-directionally sync. So if we add a new interviewer here into Airtable, it's going to sync them back into Softer and vice versa. Now, one of the really powerful pieces of functionality inside of Softer, which I referenced, is having these different user groups. Now, unfortunately, this template doesn't come with different user groups because right now we only have three interviewers and they're all hiring managers of the same tier. But I think it's pretty important that we have this ability to have different user groups. So inside of my interviewers table, I'm going to add a new single select field. We'll call this role and choose single select. And I'm going to create two different roles here, one for human resources and one for hiring manager, and we'll create that field. So let's make Lucy a hiring manager and we'll make Andy human resources and Ari is also going to be another hiring manager. And because these fields sync with software, what we can do is create a new user group. We can set this up dynamically. So if we create a user group, We'll call this one HR. Then we've got two options. We could add users manually if we just want to click and add people individually. But we want to do this dynamically. So anytime someone actually joins the HR team, they're automatically applied. And so we don't have to worry about managing that individually. So in this case, we'll say if the user's role 
is human resources, then we want to apply it. Now we can also add multiple conditions. So we could say if they're part of this country and they're part of this department or multiple criteria in order to apply this role. And presumably we would do the same thing with managers as well. Create a user group for managers and if the role is hiring manager. Great, so now we have these two different user groups and I'm gonna show you a couple different ways that we could use them in the application. Remember when we created this whole list of applicants and we could view all of the applicants in the system? Maybe we don't wanna make that visible to everybody. So we could do this either at the page level or at the block level. And we've got visibility settings here. This is where we could say, is this available to all users, logged in users, non-logged in users? So of course we only want this available to logged in users. And then we could go a step further to say, only people who are part of HR can actually see this block. So that means if I'm Ari, the hiring manager, I'm not gonna be able to see those applicants, but if I'm Andy, then I should be able to see all of the different applicants that we have across our application. Another way we could handle this is with global data restrictions. If I click back on users, there's an option for data restrictions. And here's where we could add these restrictions. And we'll make this for the positions table or positions records. And we'll say that if you are a manager, then we don't want you to have the permission to create a new record. And this would mean wherever we are in the application, we don't have to worry about it at the individual block level. We could say, if you're a manager, you can't create a new position. That has to be something that only HR can do. And so that's not just for the creation of records, but that could also be on what you can actually view or edit or delete. Now let's talk about how we can actually extend this application to make it our own. So one thing that I always laugh at is whenever we have templates for applicant tracking systems, I don't know about you and where you're located, but in the US, we'd never be asking for headshots. We'd probably get sued over that. So in reality, you have this nice card that looks really fancy, but probably you're just interested in more information and less about it looking pretty. So this is where you could add your own blocks. Right now we're using this list of horizontal cards, but in reality, I might want to choose something like a table and get a little bit more data linearly and be able to visualize that in an easier to read way. But another thing we can do is tap into Softer's actions to make this infinitely more usable. So let's click on this block here and we'll see that one of our options is for actions. If I click on that, we can create actions both at the top here, so something that would be for the entire group, or we could have these item buttons, which are going to be for each of these individual people records or applicant records that we have. So right now we have an item button for viewing details, but we could also do that essentially when we click the overall record. So we might not even need that individual item button if we didn't want to. But again, here you're looking at these four beautiful records. In reality, you might have to deal with hundreds of applicants that you need to iterate through very, very quickly. So let's add an item button and you can see we have lots of different options. We've got some navigational ones, opening certain pages, scrolling to, opening a URL. This could be internal or external. Then we've got this one for one click updates. This one I think is really powerful here. We don't have to have this say update. We're going to change this to reject. Now we're going to add the field that we want. This field is called stage inside of Airtable. And in Airtable, you can see we've got interviewing, hire and no hire. So let's change that value to no higher. And now we've got this nice little button that we can just click and it's gonna be a one click reject. Now I know that sounds a little bit harsh. So inside of Airtable, what we could do is create an automation and we would add a trigger for when this record matches conditions. We're gonna run this on our applicants table and we'll add a condition to say when that stage is no higher. And now we could add an action here and we could say, let's send them an email. We'd pull in attributes from that record. So Airtable has this really powerful automation automation builder on the back end. And so what we can do is in conjunction with Softer, in Softer we can say reject a candidate, that one click updates the status to say they're a no hire. And then we could automatically send them that email on the back end to say, hey, sorry, we've moved forward with other candidates, but we really appreciate your time. So that's one action button we could have. Another might be an item button where we want to download a file. So we wanna make it really easy to be able to access their resumes. So here we could choose download file. And for the file link, we can connect this to their resume. And we can change the label to view resume. And let's change the color of this because that maroon seems like a negative thing. So let's change this color. And let's make it something a little bit more neutral here. And then back when we're previewing the application, we can now one click reject. We could view that resume, download the resume so we can review that. I hope you can see just how powerful software is as you're building out internal applications like an applicant tracking system. Get started today by using the link in the description below.